Hey y'all, Irix Guy here. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, youtube.com forward slash Irix Guy. And share this video and any of my videos with others. Thanks for watching and y'all have a good day. Hey y'all, Irix Guy here. Now as you know, sometimes the follow-up review is more is as important if not more important than the original review and that's definitely applicable to the uh, to the latest and greatest iPhone 6 now in this case I have the iPhone 6 Plus which if you're not already familiar is the larger form factor uh, the iPhone 6 is a smaller version of this now but it's still bigger than the previous generation iPhone 5s now I've had the, the luxury of using this iPhone 6 Plus for a few weeks I didn't get it real quickly. Apparently, the iPhone 6 Plus was in uh, was in very high demand, even though I set that alarm and ordered it at the at the strike of pre-ordering. But what have I found using the iPhone 6 Plus that makes it so great? Now, keep in mind, I came from iPhone 5, so I didn't have this little touch sensor. A lot of people say, "Oh man, that's the NSA. That's the NSA tool for getting your fingerprint." Well. Honestly, if the NSA wanted my fingerprint, they probably would have already gone, gone to my truck or my car door or, or my house door or whatever and just snagged a fingerprint off of that. So, you know, I, I'm confident the NSA probably already has my fingerprint and a lot more, which is fine. So that doesn't bother me. I do like being able to push that versus having to type in a uh, password if you password protect your iPhone. That's a nice feature. But if you had iPhone 5S, you were already familiar with that. But for me, it was new because I upgraded from iPhone 5 to iPhone 6 Plus. Now, the first thing that I, the first day of using the iPhone 6 Plus, I almost felt like I was using a, um, I, I, thought, I thought I was using like a comedy phone because it's so large. It is large, but you got to keep in mind what you were coming from and I was coming from the 5 so to come from a 5 or even a I use this iPod 5th uh, generation iPod touch in the interim when I didn't have a phone but you can see it's significantly larger you can grip your around an iPod touch or an iPhone 5 you can easily if you've got larger hands put your hand all around it with the iPhone 6 Plus, that's a little bit more challenging. So, first few days of using, it felt ridiculously large in my hands. It also felt awkward, whereas with the iPhone 5 and the iPod Touch, I could do one-handed operation. With the iPhone 6 Plus, because of the larger size, even though I have big hands, I found that I hold it in one hand and use my fingers in the other to type with it, which is fine. What this is, and, and the, I forget who invented this term, but they call it a phablet. P-H-A-B-L-E-T. And the premise behind that is that it's a, it's a bastardization of a, uh, of a phone and a tablet. Because it's not big enough to be a tablet, but many feel that it's too big to be deemed a phone. So they call it a phablet. I don't care what people call it why I love this phone and why I've grown to it, it's honestly the, the best iPhone I've ever used so far and the reason being is that number one I get extremely great battery life and number two with this unlike the other models even the iPhone 6 you get full HD 1920 by 1080 and the other cool thing is that when you tilt this sideways and go into your email go into your Safari go into various other apps. The widescreen interface, for example with email, it'll show your list of messages and then you can see a preview of the email to the right. And that's something that because of the smaller screen size, you couldn't get... Um... Hold on, I'm unlocked. I was using my wrong, wrong finger. And that's another thing. You can, for the touch, touch ID or whatever, you can use multiple fingers. So sometimes I use my thumb, 
And sometimes I use this, what's that, index finger? So I program both of those in there. But I probably need to put my other hand in there too because I, <laughs> I just tried with it and I couldn't find it. So some other cool features that you may not be aware of with the iPhone 6 Plus. The camera now, the image stabilization in the camera when you're doing videos is, is absolutely incredible. And with the videos, you're now getting 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second. So what does that mean? If, if, you're not a, if you're not a camera nerd, if you're not necessarily savvy with all that, what does that mean? Well, think about it this way. Uh, if, you, uh, if you film something at a low frame rate, let's just say 10 frames per second, and then you try to speed that video up or slow it down, because that video was originally captured at 10 frames per second, it's going to look very choppy if you speed it up or slow it down. Now at a higher frame rate, in this case 60 frames per second, when you speed it up or slow it down it's going to look a lot more silky smooth because when that video was originally captured, it was captured at a higher frame rate. The camera on this is incredible and, and I like how it's got, even for the video, and this isn't anything revolutionary, but for the video you can zoom in, you can zoom out, uh, you can, when you're doing still photos, you can focus on a, on a particular point within that photo. It does a really good job of that and obviously it geotags your photos so when you look at them on a map you can see where the, where the photo was snapped. And that's handy if you're like Irish Guys Adventure Channel, youtube.com forward slash Guy because you go all over the world and you may not remember where you snapped a photo and this will this will help you with that. So the um, to be as uh, to be as 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 good as it is from a battery life perspective, it's not really that thick, which is nice. Uh, now there is um, there is something that I wanted to comment about when I originally bought this, and you may have seen my other video. I got the Apple from the Apple Store, and I don't know why I did this, but I got the Apple branded. I've got it over there somewhere. Apple branded leather case. Very nice looking case. Fit the iPhone 6 Plus like a glove. But it didn't provide the level of confidence that I needed when carrying this phone around. Because ultimately, I'm going to keep an iPhone for a minimum of two years. Because I'm cheap. And I'm not going to upgrade. I'm not going to get, uh, not going to get hooked into some sort of deal. I know a lot of providers now, they're like, well, you can get the blah, blah, blah plan, and you can upgrade as frequently as you want. And what people don't realize, and I see I'm a numbers guy, what people don't realize is if they take advantage of that plan, they're actually, they're actually doing themselves an anti-favor. Because what they're doing, if you look at the cost, it's like, oh, it's you know $20 a month, let's just say hypothetically. $20 a month, and you can upgrade whenever. But if you look at the fine print and you add that $20, multiply that $20 times X amount of payments, you're going to find that you're paying an excessive amount of money for that phone. Whereas if you just waited for the two years or whatever and got the, got the, uh, the discounted renewal rate for another uh, two-year contract, you'll find that you're likely spending a few hundred dollars less. So for that reason, I'm cheap. I upgrade at minimum. And let's say offer a plan that's that's really fair I'm sticking with that uh, upgrade you know no more frequently than every two years so I gotta take care of this phone and by taking care of this phone that Apple leather case although it looked nice it didn't give me that confidence I needed so you can check the link within this video's description you can find the case I'm using I like it a lot been using it for a few weeks it's not that bulky some of the cases that are that are protective cases are bulky. This one's not. It has a kickstand on the back. So when you're, in, when you're in an airplane watching movies, you can just prop it up and watch, uh, watch a movie, you know. It's got a cut out for the Apple logo, so when you're out in those, in those snooty situations, people are like, hey, what kind of phone is that? You can hold it up and like, oh, it's Apple. He must be cool or whatever. I mean, I don't know. People, I don't know. I don't care what brand something is as long as I like it. So, 
got a lot of perks. The, the feel of it is really nice. It's got these ridges on the side, so better prevent it from falling out of your hand. And it does have an elevation. It's, it's a slightly elevated above the glass. So if you sit it down on a flat surface, assuming that there's nothing on the flat surface sticking up, the uh, sapphire crystal should likely not make contact with, the, uh, with anything on the flat surface. And it's got these little reinforced corners, and typically when you drop it, it's going to land on one of the four corners. And I have dropped it once. <laughs> so it's a good thing I got this case. And it comes in other colors, but that is definitely, if, if I went, if, if you're on the fence about upgrading, or, or maybe this is your first iPhone, the first thing I would do when I get the iPhone 6 Plus is to get a case, and I would definitely recommend this case. Again, check the link within this video description. You can find uh, a link to order. It comes in other colors. This is green, but you can get, they, they had a bunch of other colors when I ordered this. I did not put a screen protector on it. If you're not familiar, Sapphire Crystal is the same uh, the same material that a lot of popular Swiss watches are made out of, like, like this Breitling right here. Sapphire Crystal is basically, now you can scratch it if you have like a diamond or something and rub against it, but for that reason I didn't even put a screen protector on it because it would take, it would take something pretty strong to scratch uh, Sapphire Crystal. So what do I not like about the iPhone 6 Plus? I think there's t I think it's time for Apple to integrate a solar panel into the back of their phone so that when you're outside or you're driving down the road you can sit your you sit your phone down and it'll charge up. I know there's add-on accessories that will do that, but as small as solar panels have become, why not put a solar panel option in an iPhone? That's something I'd like to see. What I do like a lot is that they stuck with the uh, with the lightning connector. That's the same charging, syncing type uh, cable that came with the uh, starting at iPhone 5 and obviously it was an iPhone 5S as well. So I didn't have to buy a bunch of new cables to charge and sync this phone. That was great. I would definitely encourage anyone to go larger than 16 gig. In the past, 16 gig seemed to be satisfactory if you didn't load it up with apps and photos. But nowadays, 64 gigs probably about your best bet. I got 64. You could spend what is it about $100 or so, or so more and get 128, I think. But for for me, 64 gig has been fine because I sync most of my stuff to iCloud or to and or my iMac desktop computer. And on my iMac desktop computer, I've got 24 terabytes. Um, so I've got. Uh, <laughs> I got a modest amount of storage there, but I do have a lot of HD video and 4K video, so it is kind of kind of being consumed. But yeah, the the and the display on this obviously is super sharp. The speakers sound good. The um, I mean, there's really nothing nothing negative I can say about it, and and I've. I'm I'm hooked on iPhones. I have to admit it because they interface very well with my with my MacBook Air, and my iMac, and it's just a it's a very pleasant experience being able to uh, being able to post a reminder in here and have it pop up across all my devices, or post a reminder on my on my iMac and then I'll get it on my phone. And we haven't seen the good stuff yet because the rumored well not rumored it, it is going to hit. But the Mac OS X Yosemite, if you're a desktop user as well, Mac OS X Yosemite is going to better integrate the iPhone and your desktop and or laptop computing experience. So for example, if you're starting a, uh, an email on your phone, then you could go home and get on your, on your MacBook Air, your iMac or whatever and finish that email. So it's, it's some really cool features there. And then also, Yosemite is going to bring in some, uh, some functionality to where if you've got your phone in your pocket or, or nearby and you receive a phone call, you could opt to use your computer speakers for that call versus the, the phone. So lots of goodness coming. And 
yeah, iPhone 6, if I was going to go out and buy another phone today, I would not hesitate. I would definitely get the 6 Plus because if you're like me, once you start using that 6 Plus, it's not going to feel as big in your hand. Now, do I want Apple to go bigger on the next iPhone, the iPhone 7 or, or the iPhone 6 Plus S or whatever they may call it? No. I think this is a good size. I don't think I would want anything larger than this iPhone 6 Plus. But for me, it's perfect. So I hope this video is of value. Be, be sure to drop me a line if you have any specific, specific questions, rather, and I'll try my best to answer. Uh, and also, be sure to subscribe, youtube.com forward slash irixguy. Help to support my channel, share with others, help me grow. And most importantly, y'all have a good day.